there were a lot of people I remember at parties who would talk about writing and that they wanted to be a writer. But I would always notice that they were out. Every time I would happen to go out, they would always be out. And they, I just know that, that there are people who talk about what they would do if, but they're not actually doing the thing. And so it's a lot easier to actually write a screenplay than you think it is. It might not be good, but most people talk about writing screenplays but don't actually write them. The people who write them, you're already like in you know, the top 10% because you actually have written it. The idea of writing a feature screenplay is horrifying to some, myself included, in the past, and honestly, still. It's never not scary. It feels like this insurmountable task that I couldn't possibly finish, or at least finish well. And really, this episode is a mildly selfish one. I wanted to make something that I could come back and watch each time I'm planning to start a new script, just as a reminder. Because every time I finish a script, I feel good. I feel like I could do it again. I'm proud. But then, by the time I start the next, since there's always space in between scripts, a massive amount of doubt moves back in. A little voice in the back of my head tells me that I can't do it again, and the finish line for a new story suddenly seems light years away. And since I just finished a new screenplay and it's all fresh in my head, I figured now was the best time to make this episode that will hopefully help those whose brains work like mine and can be something that I can revisit myself to encourage future me that you can do it again. Or if you're someone who hasn't written a script at all yet, hopefully by the end of this, you'll see that you absolutely can. Now this episode is very much about my process of beginning and getting through that first bit of the screenplay, and I'm of course not saying this is the way to do it. That would be ridiculous for several reasons. First of which is that I've only written a handful of features, and even more importantly, there's a million ways to go about getting into and through a story. For me, the only thing that really matters is the end result, not how you got there. But again, I do have my specific way of working and thinking, and some may apply to you, some may not. But regardless, taking on the task of writing a feature screenplay means slaying a lot of dragons to get to the peak of this insane mountain. And that first dragon to slay is insecurity. I suppose you never really slay it, but if you're like me, insecurity can be a block to getting started at all. I think that's the reason I tend to procrastinate until there's a deadline and then I go hard at it all at once. Because if I don't write it, it can't be bad, right? The second you start writing, you could discover that you aren't any good. Or maybe you're afraid of this particular idea. It means something to you and you you don't want to screw it up. And again, if you don't start, it can't be bad. For some of you, this may make no sense at all. You can always rewrite, start over, and so on, but you know, brains are weird. For me, the key has been removing that pressure, realizing and accepting that the first draft will likely suck horribly, but that's okay. With that first draft done, you can start the rewriting, which is a much more pleasant process. There's a great quote, which I'm not 100% sure who said it first, but it goes, great writers aren't great first drafters, they're great rewriters. Then you have the master, Stephen King, who said, don't write it right, just write it and then make it right later. Or Ernest Hemingway's very succinct, the first draft of anything is shit. Then you even have Sylvester Stallone, who wrote the Rocky films, Rambo, and a ton more. So on a legal pad, I'll go, goes to here, sees his mother, goes to the store. Goes, so I'll have like 10 things uh, of beats where he's going, um, gets on a horse, goes swimming, boom, boom, boom. And I do that. And I know in my heart, 80% of it will be no good. But you're getting through the screenplay. You're getting it done because a rewrite is always more fun and much more enjoyable. It's, I don't believe people should look for perfection or even 50% perfection in the first draft. It's always going to be kind of this, like a child scribbling, but you did it. And the main thing for me is to, once you have that accomplishment, let's say in two, you could do it in two weeks, three weeks. Again, maybe 10% will be good, but you've now have this sense of accomplishment, you did it, and the rewriting process starts, and that's when the fun begins. For me, that is all massively helpful and encouraging. You cut yourself some slack. Recognize that the first pass probably won't be great, but you'll get there through iteration. It's that idea that helps me get started with the actual writing on the blank page, but let's go back. You have an idea, so the first thing to do is break the story. This comes in different ways for me, but for the last two scripts, it meant starting with research. The obvious thing here 
is if you are writing about this real thing that happened, you'll research that. And there's been a bit of that in my latest, but it's more about researching everything you don't know. I wrote a film that took place in a boarding school. It's not necessarily about the boarding school, but I still had no idea what that kind of life was like. So I spent a few weeks researching that, reading and watching everything that I could and interviewing people that were kind enough to give me their time. There's an arrest scene in another one of my films, but I've never been arrested. So it was about diving in and finding what the realities of that are. Not only that, but discovering as much of the experiential things as I possibly could. What did that room feel like, smell like, was the paint chipped, and so on. For me, that has really been the seasoning of the meal I'm creating. Story, theme, and character, that's the meat, the veggies, and so on. But those elements that I gather from research really does season all of that. Then by doing this research, I'll end up finding the beats to my story. You'll either pull things directly or reality will spark other ideas. And of course, research could mean watching films, listening to music, reading books, and so on. It's all ammo that you load up on. Then with that done, the next thing is to beat out the story. And again, this isn't for everyone. Some people like to write without any outline at all, but my brain just does not work that way. And I also love iteration. So I built my process to have as much of that as possible. But the first step is a very laid back beat sheet in my notes app or Milano. As I've talked about in the past, I think of structure in six acts. So I have my 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B. Then I'll add three spots in each of these sections, a beginning, middle, and end to every one of these breaks. And I'll start filling this in with what I think it will be. We broke down the story for the ring in another episode. So I'm just gonna use those beats here as the example. If you wanna see the episode where we fully break this down, I'll throw that in the notes below for you. But for me, starting this loose lets my mind float through different ideas quickly without putting any pressure on myself. And once I have something here that feels good, I'll start shifting that over to my actual beat board, which I've done in Final Draft and on Milanote. We're gonna stick with Milanote here because you can use that for free right now. So I'll make sections for my six acts, and now I'll start to really dig in and beat out every scene in the film. And I do not copy and paste from my other note. I don't even reread what I wrote in my notes app. I also keep voice recordings of any idea I come up with, whether I'm in the shower or in bed and an idea pops, so I have all of those, and I do not listen to those either. Instead, I build out new beats based on what I remember. They most often stay very similar, but many times I find I come up with better versions of that original thought. Then after I have all that down, I'll revisit the notes and the voice memos to see if there's anything I want to change or add. And that's my first iteration. And usually it's here that I'm starting to try and discover character and theme, but again, that can be another area that I add too much pressure on myself and create another block. With my other scripts before this latest one, I did let it be a block, but then I read this great quote from Greta Gerwig. I don't really decide what the core of my story is before I write. I write to figure out what the story is. For Gerwig, finding the core was rooted in letting her characters, mostly Lady Bird in that instance, become who and what they wanted to be right on the page. And that made me realize that I had been starting with what I thought the theme was, but then the film presented what it actually was as I wrote anyway. And in the end, other people were revealing themes to me that I didn't even recognize in the first place, since you will write those ideas in without even knowing it because that is you. So I stopped trying to force it up front. If I already have it, great. If I don't, I'll find it along the way. But with theme and character, you can create specific boards on Milanote for exactly that. Milanote is also a partner on the episode today, but you can start using it for free, so it is a great resource. But Milanote, like I always say, is that digital creative board. It's where I house all my research since I love how you can create these columns for different ideas, links to populate in very useful at a glance ways. So it lets me really connect things and quickly without having to dial in too much. But they also have solid templates here to get you thinking and started in a direction like character boards. Once you start building out your characters, you can create these sort of character Bibles to really map out who they are. Or you can use their beat sheet template if you wanna go with a straight save the cat sort of direction or create a whole custom board just to explore themes. I'm a big fan of keeping things organized like this. As it all goes on, it can get pretty cluttered. So this is a great way to stay sane by building out these boards and drilling things down. And there's plenty more here. It's great for shot lists, all your pre-production planning and so on. You can make notes, draw on things, collaborate in meaningful ways. And there's an app for quick access wherever you're at too. And yes, this is a partner, but I honestly use this constantly on every project and you can get 
get started for free, so if it seems like something that will help your process, check the notes below. So we have our idea, we've built out our beat sheet and gathered all the main core ideas, which during that phase of idea gathering, there's a lot of shower time for me. I find places like the shower or driving alone in my car are the best times for ideation. You can't get on a device, no one's bothering you, so you can just think without interruption. So finding that space for yourself is a huge help too. But with my beat sheet finished, I'll start adding these into the script as scene headings and short descriptions of each scene. If I'm feeling inspired, I'll write sections as I go as well, but there's still no pressure here. If I feel it, great. If I don't, just do a summary and move on. And now after I've done that, I have a template for my film from start to finish, and I'm ready to start actually writing the script, but I don't have to face the blank page. I've tricked myself into already writing a ton, so it's no longer this scary sea of white. I have this roadmap to follow, and now it's about filling those things in. Of course, you need to stay fluid. Don't marry yourself to anything. I'm aiming for these targets, but I allow the story and character to go wherever it seems they want. So things always shift and go in different directions here and there, but the key for me has been creating groundwork to get me going. The script I wrote before this latest one took me an entire year. I let so many things get in my way, but with this latest, I took what I learned about myself from the last and all the great advice of amazing writers and applied that. And the main idea there was just to get it out. Like King says, don't write it right, just write it. Once you have that finished document, document, you can see the entirety so much more clearly, and editing and rewriting that is so much more fun. Plus, you can start getting feedback, see what's working and what isn't, instead of just being in this lonely cavern not knowing what's working and what isn't. Before this latest, I would rewrite while I was writing. I would go back and edit the previous day's work before starting today's, and maybe that works for you, but for me, it just slowed the process down to a destructive degree. So to future me, don't overthink it, don't be precious, get that vomit pass done, get the ideas on the page and go from there. It's not insurmountable, it's completely doable, and if it's bad, that's okay. You can make it better once it's all on the page. The first draft is just that, the first of many to come. But finally, there are two major ingredients to get a solid script for me. First is how to avoid your own personal dark night of the soul as a writer. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm like a junkie with this thing. Every time I'll start thinking I can't break it on my own, I'm not good enough to come up with the right ideas, I need to bring someone in to help, and so on and so on. But that little hole in the back of your head is trying to stop you. So for me, it's been incredibly important to have someone that you can trust that will be a cheerleader and someone to help keep you accountable. I have two, and if it wasn't for them, I would never finish a script. And the last thing is by far the most important ingredient for me, and that is time taking the time to let the idea cook, meaning time for you to think about it continuously, all the time, over and over, trying the idea in your mind at every single angle, writing, rewriting, and rewriting some more. We're not always afforded that much time, but still, for me, having enough time to let things cook has been key in landing on the story that I wanted in the end. But that is the foundational things that have helped me, and as I've said on the show a ton, build your own process, try everything, and keep the stuff that sticks. My process has become a mixture of a lot of things that I've heard from different writers, and trial and error, something I had to find over time. So throw out ideas like I'm doing it wrong. I say do it wrong. Be you and discover your own right way along the way. A lot of the quotes that I've used today are from the Instagram account, Outstanding Screenplays. Definitely give them a follow. They have a constant stream of motivation for writers. It's great. But that's it for today. And to close us out, I'm going to leave you with something from one of the greatest filmmakers living today. And even easier, if you want to write, Right. You know, I think that uh, writing is the only, one of the only uh, things that can be done uh, with very little uh, resources. And even if you die and you were unpublished, you still have a chance. <laughs> you know, it, it's truly, you cannot do that with directing. You need other people, you need a little bit of help, you need at least an actor in front of the camera. You know, but, but I think these are, what I say is go and do it. <laughs>